someone posted a fairly scathing comment on one of my videos this week, the one about EV range. They said that EVs are a scam and that I am probably a shill for EV manufacturers being paid to promote their lies. Well, no, I'm not being paid by anyone, but let's not go into that. In the comments, they questioned why it is recommended that people only charge their cars to 80%. Could it be, they asked, that the batteries will fail if they charge to 100%? And am I hiding that fact? Whilst the comment now seems to have been deleted, so I can't now reply to it, I think the question is a valid one. So let's discuss that very thing today. Hello everyone. Apologies about the background noise if you can hear that today. It seems to be grouse shooting season, I think. Now you may have heard a recommendation to charge an EV to only 80%, but not had the context as to why that might be helpful. Today, I want to explain the background and give you extra understanding of why 80% is mentioned and what happens if you ignore it. The place to start is to say that there are two separate recommendations that mention the 80% figure, and I'm going to explain both. The two areas to discuss are charging time on a long journey and battery degradation. Let's start with charging time on a long journey. This is the shorter of the two topics, so we can probably cover this one fairly quickly. If you undertake a long journey in an EV, one which is significantly longer than the car's total range, then by definition, charging time forms part of the total journey time. On a trip of this type, there are different strategies you can employ to minimize the total trip duration. You could, for example, choose to stop as few times as possible and charge for a long time on each stop. Or you could choose to stop more frequently, but for shorter durations on each stop. Consider these the tortoise and the hare. Hopefully you recognize that reference in your culture. The greater percentage we need to replenish in an EV, the longer it's going to take. However, charging speed is not constant Cars generally charge very quickly at low states of charge and slow down as the battery becomes fuller. Here is a graph representing the speed at which a lithium ion battery charges. On the vertical axis is the speed of charging. This is the amount of power being applied, often displayed in kilowatts when discussing cars. On the horizontal axis is the state of charge, expressed as a percentage, with 0% on the left hand side and 100% on the right. If the charge speed were constant throughout the charging cycle, then the line on the graph would be horizontal. However, on this graph we can see the line is not horizontal very much. After some time charging, the speed at which we are charging starts to drop. The higher up the state of charge of, ba of the battery that we go, as we work our way right along the horizontal axis of the graph, the lower the line becomes. It is slower to charge the battery as it becomes fuller, and that's what that graph is trying to show us. The best analogy I've heard, although unfortunately I've forgotten where I heard it, so apologies to whoever came up with this analogy, but the best analogy I've heard is that lots of cars parking in a car park or parking lot, when the car park is empty, it is very quick to find a space and to park in it. As the car park gets fuller, we spend longer trying to find a space and then parking in it, perhaps in tight spaces that are left. A car will generally take about the same time to go from 80% state of charge to 100%, as it did going from 10% to 80%, it's a big difference. For this reason, it is usually faster to stop a charging session as the speed becomes too low, perhaps at something like 70% or 80%, and then move on. Now that figure will vary a bit from car to car. So if you're trying to work out your strategy, then maybe look for a graph about the particular car you have. Now you may need to stop one more time by 
uh, stopping before 100%. But it is still faster to do this than to wait for the car to fill any more because it is going so slowly. It is also worth pointing out that a lot of the time you don't even need to wait until you reach 80%. As a number of viewers have commented on several of my videos, we should remind people, even EV owners, that you only need to put in as much charge as is needed to get to your uh, destination. DC rapid charging is expensive at the moment, so planning to AC charge at your destination while you do what you went there for is often both cheaper and easier than DC rapid charging to high states of charge. Now the second reason we talk about only charging to 80% is to do with the long-term battery health. But to talk about this one, I first need to do a bit of background on battery chemistries at a high level. Currently, there are two main types of lithium ion battery used in EVs, two different chemistries. The most common chemistry, by far, is known colloquially as the NMC battery chemistry. This uses nickel, manganese and cobalt to offer high energy density, giving the best range to the car possible. The second most common chemistry is known as LFP. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery and offers lower energy density than NMC, but has some other benefits. Those other benefits include things like the fact that LFP is slightly cheaper than NMC because the raw materials used are a bit less expensive. LFP batteries can also be charged and discharged more times before battery degradation is noticeable. They are generally a bit more stable and that is partially because each LFP cell has a slightly lower voltage when fully charged. That lower cell voltage results in the electrolyte, the liquid within the cell, being less affected by the battery being at a high state of charge. LFP is a chemistry that has no problem at all being charged to or sitting at 100% state of charge. So the 80% recommendation for charging does not apply to them in terms of battery health. Cars using LFP cells are not yet all that common, but there are a few that already exist and include the standard range Tesla Model 3 since about 2021, the rear wheel drive Tesla Model Y built in Shanghai, the standard range variant of the MG4, the standard range Ford Mustang Mark E, the BYD Atto 3, the BYD Dolphin, and in the United States, the standard range Rivian R1T. With all of those cars, forget the 80% recommendation I'm about to discuss in association with battery health. For pretty much everything else, the next section does apply to them. The NMC battery chemistry has a high enough voltage when fully charged that the electrolyte can become slightly de degraded when charged to 100%. The problem isn't reaching 100% state of charge, it's more about it sitting at 100% state of charge for a long time, many, many days, many times. This is a very small effect. It can cause slight battery degradation. It doesn't destroy the battery, that's not what degradation is. It just reduces the total energy that the battery can release after many years. If you care about the long-term health of your car over 10 or 15 years, for example, then not having the car sat at 100% state of charge for a long time is better for its health in the long run. Instead, using the car between 80% and 30% when the range doesn't matter to your usage does the best you can do for the battery. Reserve charging to 100% for when you need it. But for long trips, when it is helpful, charge to 100%, run it low and benefit from the range. That's what it's there for. Now, electrifying.com did a nice write-up on this effect, which I've linked in the description below. The analogy they used was one that I really liked, which is this. Revving your engine to a high speed in a petrol or diesel car, or even redlining it, 
doesn't destroy it, it just increases the wear a small amount each time that you do it, a very small amount. In those cars, we don't panic if we rev the engine, we just try not to do it all of the time. To reiterate, the effect of leaving a car at 100% state of charge is very small. Don't panic about it, just bear it in mind. And if you'd like to do the best you can for it, then just charge to 80% when the car is going to do a few miles. When going on a road trip or some other time where it is more convenient, then charge to 100%. It is there to be used. Indeed, you should charge to 100% occasionally anyway. That's good for it, as this balances all of the cells in the pack with a nice slow charge levelling process. What about a low state of charge? Is that an issue? Well, completely flattening an NMC cell to zero volts is really bad for it. And that's exactly why the car does not let you do so. There is always capacity in the battery when the car stops moving. 0% on the dashboard is not zero volts. It's more like something like 3.2 volts. It's the lowest voltage that any of the cells is allowed to go without damaging it. There is a battery management system in the car that is carefully monitoring each cell and it's using the voltages of the cells in order to work out when the battery is flat, as it were, when you are not allowed to use it anymore. However, there is one word of caution that I would mention about low states of charge of the traction battery. There are actually two batteries in an EV. There's the main traction battery that drives the car, the lithium ion battery. There is a second battery under the monit, known as the accessory battery. This is usually a lead acid battery in anything other than a Tesla. And this uh, drives the lights and the wipers and the dashboard systems and the computers and things like that. The car uses energy from the main traction battery to charge the accessory battery every once in a while just to keep it topped up. But I think that cars stop charging the accessory battery when the traction battery is below about 20%. That figure might vary a bit by car, but that's roughly uh, something to have in mind. What this means is if you leave your EV at a very low state of charge for a few days, then you might flatten the accessory battery. The car does turn on every once in a while and use a bit of energy from the 12 volt battery. And therefore it is slowly running down and it won't get topped up by the traction battery if the traction battery is below a certain percentage. Now leaded acid batteries also don't like being flattened. As you will know if you have ever left your lights on in an internal combustion engine car and flattened the lead acid battery in one of those. The accessory battery, even if it's been uh, flattened, will recharge if you put it on a battery charger. You can often recover them with a special type, more expensive type of battery charger called a conditioning charger. This runs a series of special cycles to try to recover them, but lead acid batteries are never quite the same once they've been flattened, as you may have found in an ICE car. Now the accessory battery is easy to replace, and quite cheap, just as in an ICE car. But save yourself some money, and don't let it get flat in the first place, which you do by limiting the number of times you let the main traction battery get too low and then stay there for a long time. So what do I do when furnished with all of this knowledge, I hear you ask? Well, generally I charge my car to 75 or 80% most of the time. I use it as normal through the week for the day-to-day -day trips that all of us do most of the time. I then recharge the car when it's convenient, uh, but usually when I'm getting down to about 35% or 30%, something like that. This is mainly so that I can drive it without having to think about range at all in the following days. For road trips, I charge to 100% the night before. During the trip, I run it down as far as about 5% if it saves me uh, needing to charge before I get home. But if I need to charge en route anyway, then I will probably do so at more like 10 to 15%, just for peace of mind, to avoid any form of charger anxiety. 
Before I finish, I should say this. There are people continuing to spread myths and misinformation about EV batteries, but they are failing to take notice of the car listings, the second-hand used market, where there are 10 to 12-year-old Mitsubishi Imeovs and Nissan Leafs for sale with perfectly usable traction batteries. All of the early EVs used NMC cells if they're a lithium-ion car. And they were built and operated at a time when we understood a bit less about that particular chemistry, certainly in the um, wider public co uh, consciousness, if you like. EVs were rare that long ago. So for so many of them still to exist on the used market, there can't be too much wrong with them, can there? So in summary, if I am asked if the traction battery of an EV will die when you either charge it above 80%, or use it below 20%, then my answer is an emphatic no. For cars with LFP cells, don't worry. Charge to 100% all of the time. They actually quite like that. LFP cells are, you know, very robust, and indeed they may possibly even outlive the cockroaches on Earth. They last a long time. For a car with NMC cells, you can help it to outlive the rest of the car by avoiding it sitting above 80% or below 20% for long periods of time. But importantly, do what makes you happy. Drive it how you need. Enjoy it as much as you want, and don't worry too much. There are no battery apocalypses coming. The people who say there is an imminent disaster coming don't want EVs to exist. Why they might want that is a topic for another video. Well, that's it for another video. Thanks very much for joining me. Your questions and comments are most welcome in the section below. What do you think about this topic? If you've liked the video, it's a help to me if you click the thumbs up button. That tells YouTube that you've enjoyed it and YouTube is more likely to promote it to other people who may also enjoy it. And of course, click subscribe if you wanna see more. Thanks.